Welcome to another edition of Coping Through Introspection, A Journey Into You. My name is Dawn and I am a coping advocate, which is just a fancy way for saying I help people cope <laughs> with things that have been handed to them. Um, I have a laundry list myself. If you want to pause that and look anything up, um, I've been dealing with chronic conditions for a very long time. Um, as I've mentioned in my other videos, I started a page on Facebook called Positively Narcolepsy to try and spread the positivity. Uh, studies show that wakefulness helps increase with positive emotions and anger. And we don't want to be David Banner, so we're going to be positive instead. <laughs> That's the goal. Of course, you don't always get there, and there are going to be times when you feel like you'll never be positive again. But you find a way, as you have every day before this one. So the topic of this conversation is killing the monkey in your mind. So what is monkey mind? Um, the Buddhists define monkey mind as being unsettled, restless, capricious, whimsical, fanciful, confused. Wait, is that brain fog? Just kidding. I had a funny quote here that I read. Instead, Buddha said, if you will spend some time each day in quiet meditation, simply calm your mind by focusing on your breathing or a simple mantra, you can, over time, tame the monkeys. They will grow more peaceful if you lovingly bring them into submission with a consistent practice of meditation. To which I say, ah, ha, ha, ha. That's a good one. I love you, oh great Buddha. I even bloat like you do. Thanks, Pots. Uh, but I disagree. I just disagree. And it's okay to disagree with the Buddha. <laughs> because I have a case behind disagreeing with the Buddha. So living with a history of abuse, neglect, uh, suffering from chronic illness or pain, living in a toxic environment, uh, being in debt with no foreseeable way out, it makes it so much more challenging than just doing some breathing. I have notes over here, so I'm going to be looking over here so I don't lose track. Um, I scripted the whole thing out, but I'm not, trying not to stick completely to the script, but I'm going to use it as a guide. Um, I'm also going to put this up on the blog, and I'll talk about that more later. So... There's a lot of self-help out there on the internet. I've ingested it all for over a decade. And the one thing I realized is we're different. <laughs> if you have chronic anything going on, you're different. And just like when they're putting together lesson plans for school, they teach to what's called the lowest common denominator. And self-help is like that too, but in a different way. They're dealing with people who are um, healthy, who are not saddled with um, constant challenges, like people who have lifelong chronic illnesses. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. I mean, it helped me eventually. I just had to figure out that there's more to it for me than just some breathing. <laughs> I had to do some sweeping up before I could get to the breathing part. So, um, how many times have people said, if you just eat better and exercise, you'll feel better, right? Because that's what everybody gets when they go to the doctor. Oh, are you feeling a little down? Go have some good food and, and run around the park a little bit. You'll feel better. And yes, endorphins come with running and activity, and you probably will feel better. I can't run. Uh, too much going on in my body to even think about running. And that's okay. But I needed to find something else besides the running to help me feel better. And I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's see. 
So when you have a chronic illness, there's always going to be something um, of weight, okay? Whether it's family that doesn't understand uh, what you're going through, feeding your doubts about yourself and your capabilities, or um, doctors questioning your symptoms or your motivation or your participation in your own illnesses. Um, worrying if your coworkers notice when you're super foggy or nodding off at your desk. Um, take your naps. Um, wondering if our house will ever be clean, if meds will ever work. If our kids understand, and that's a big one, right? I mean, we're, if you're raising little people, <laughs> you can't help but think about that. Are they going to understand, you know, that I'm doing the best I can, that's giving it all I got, but it's not always going to be enough. And I listened to a TED Talk last week. I started listening to them while I'm driving the kids to school and the kids are listening and we're having conversations afterwards and it's really great. It's like um, the kind of education that you can't get in school, listening to people talk about life, you know, whatever the topic is. I mean, TED Talks are great. They just fill your head with so much new stuff and you should be filling your head with new stuff every day and, and good new stuff too, not you know, garbage tabloid stuff. Sorry, tabloids. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when you're challenged with chronic illness, um, keeping your brain active uh, will go a long way toward helping you with your symptoms. Um, the more you use it, you know, the stronger it gets. So even if it's just um, word puzzles on your phone, um, always try to be engaged in something intellectual because it will help you. So this TED Talk was talking about uh, the wandering mind, about how much time we spend um, actively focused on something. And like, you know, you start doing the dishes and your body knows how to do dishes, so your brain wanders off like a toddler at the petting zoo. <laughs> so, uh, how long do you think that you spend with your mind wandering? I was surprised to hear the guy say uh, 30 to 50% of the time that we're conscious, our minds are wandering. I mean, I thought for sure with, you know, working a job or you'd be focused on something and you wouldn't have as much of the mind wandering in a day. but half of your day your mind is wandering and what this video is going to talk about is where does it wander to <laughs> that's what we need to figure out uh, the brain uses 20 percent of the energy consumed by the entire body for a three pound organ that's enormous and I also listened to this week, I'm going to post these TED Talks on the blog. Um, I'll put the, I'll embed them, the YouTube links in case you're interested in listening to any of them. Um, but the first thing to go is executive function and I'll talk about that in a little bit too. Um, okay, so. Our thoughts can consume us as much as our symptoms. And it wasn't until I gave myself permission to stop thinking about everything all the time that I was able to make this happen for myself. And as I sat down to do this, I, I literally had to go back in time, like two years if not more, even more than two years, three years, maybe even more, to where I couldn't remember the kind of things that used to chew me up inside. And they did, but I couldn't remember them. And that's a really great problem to have. <laughs> then, and even better, after I remembered them, 
and pulled the lessons out to share with you, they went right back to where they came from, which is inaccessible to me. <laughs> Not smushed down and hidden, just gone. I just don't, I don't need them, so they're gone. Downsize mentally and physically. It's a very good thing to do. Okay, so the way I live my life is very different from other people. So I don't want you to seek to, to be me. I want you to listen to what I have to say. And I want you to put it through the you filter. <laughs> and then try things that are right for you. Um, maybe something that I tried won't sit with you at all, but it will make you think of something else you could do instead that would solve the same issue. And that's what you're looking for with the introspection. Okay, um, let's see. So, 50% of the time our minds are wandering. So, what happens? We think about things, you know, Aunt Agnes and her opinions, uh, bad things, good things. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, your, your mind's wandering. Where is it going? So the thoughts that you have lead to feelings that you have. You're remembering something, you're thinking about something, whether it's happy, sad, painful, uh, whatever. It's you're having feelings and feelings lead to emotions. And then your emotions can lead to symptoms or they can lead to uh, mood changes. You can get in a bad mood just by thinking about something that puts you in a bad mood. Um, or you can have peace. You can in your head all the time. It's not easy but you can do it. And I'm gonna try and give you some ideas how you can do it. <laughs> That's why we're doing this. I'm sorry, I'm not a professional person. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm just doing the best I can. The information is what's important, not me. So if you wanna imagine I'm someone else doing this better, <laughs> knock yourself out. Okay, oh, let's see. All right, so your thoughts can really tear you up. And we're gonna talk about identifying your thoughts. Call them thought monkeys. It's cute, right? I mean, gotta have a catchy little cute thing for the video purposes or whatever. So you have all kinds of monkeys in your head. You got bill monkeys and memory monkeys and, and food monkeys and all kinds of things. And, uh, yeah, they can be running around and causing problems for you. So you want to get rid of them, all of them, all the time. And um, for me, that was really the only way. It was like a quick death. <laughs> if you don't want to call it death, if you don't want to call it killing monkeys, you can call it um, abolishing monkeys or whatever you want. I don't want you to, you know, be wrapped around the silly little catchphrase. The point is to clear your mind. And if you have success clearing your mind by meditating, you don't really need this video because <laughs> you can quiet your mind. But I couldn't for a long time. And a lot of people with narcolepsy are even afraid just to try to meditate because they know they'll just fall asleep and who knows when they'll wake up. Okay, so some of the things that I put in place um, before I was able to succeed. Now, I was trying to get rid of my monkeys this whole time I was going through these things, but I wasn't successful until I completed them. So, you know, maybe you'll be able to do it without all that. I don't know, but it took me a long time. I'm a hard head. I'm a really hard head. Very stubborn. Um, okay, so... Let's. I the, some of the things that I've enjoyed since being able to clear my mind. Um, 
I don't let other people's thoughts or emotions affect me. I don't wallow, although I have been known to throw a mean pity party for one. <laughs> but it's usually over quickly and there's always chocolate. I don't analyze, obsess, wonder, or consume myself with previous conversations, current drama, memories, uh, pretty much anything really. Um, for the first time in my life, if someone asked me what I was thinking as I was looking at the sunset, I could honestly say nothing and mean it, right? not thinking about anything. And I'll tell you one thing, sunsets look a lot better that way. Everything looks better that way when you get rid of those monkeys that are throwing their poo all over your brain. You just don't need it. You don't. And you know the cool thing about being a human being that you might not realize is that you have total control over your brain in terms of what you think about. I can't replace my hypocretin. I can't tell my pain receptors to turn themselves off. I can't bring back my saliva. But this playground, all mine. All mine. And that is where the coping really kicks in to thriving, is when you really own your space and you know yourself. So, goals. All right, let's see. Oh, I already said that. I'm not going to say that. Um, okay, so when I was 41, happiness fell out of the sky and hit me on the head. Um, there were a bunch of things that happened before then that set it up for it to happen that way. Um, and I'm going to do a video about that too, about finding my own happiness. Um, but it was really important as part of my process that the happiness happened first. But I was miserable for 41 years. So if you've had happy moments in your life, um, then it, it, it's not necessary to be completely happy before you go through this. Um, another TED Talk that I listened to was about... Um, The worst thing you can do to generate self-awareness, this expert who did all this research on hundreds and hundreds of people said, the worst thing is introspection, <laughs> which is funny to me because <laughs> I'm listening to it going, oh, that's a problem because I've already branded this sucker. <laughs> Okay, so I kept listening because, you know, you want to do that. You want to listen to the whole thing of things. And she said, um, the success rate with introspection as a therapy is 20%. And the reason for that is the concept of introspection as a therapy is looking into yourself and asking why. Why did this happen to me? Why did I say those things? Why? Don't, no, no why, no why, just a no why. Don't think about why. Only think about what. What am I doing? <laughs> what is happening and what can I do about it? Who cares how it got there? We don't care. If a giant bug fell in the middle of your living room, the first thought you would have is, what is that and what do I do about it? Not, why? Why did this fall in my house? So what is what you're going for? Because why is just going to keep you dancing with monkeys. <laughs> no, we got to get rid of the monkeys. I need to stop moving my hands so much, making waves. Okay, uh, let's see. All right. So people who ask the what have a much more success with getting to self-awareness. And to me, self-awareness is just knowing yourself. You know, there's no BS 
between you and your thoughts and what comes out of your mouth. You're, you're just real, you're authentic, you're genuine. What you think and what you say match. What you say and what you do match. And the benefit of living your life like that is brain fog is real, people. <laughs> it is. And the one thing that helps you more than anything else when you're suffering from brain fog is automatic behavior. So the more adept you are at doing things the right way every time, over and over, the better your body remembers to do them the same way every time over and over and you don't forget to put the laundry soap in because you have step one step two step three step four and you talk yourself through those steps and then it becomes completely automatic and you don't forget little things like that anymore your your body just does them automatically while you're trying to figure out where your monkeys are wandering off to okay Clearing your mind is not going to fix you. Like a lot of people talk about, you know, reaching enlightenment and healing themselves. And um, I personally think I'm, I'm pretty well set mentally, but I'm not healed. I, I haven't fixed myself. I just fixed this. My, my face still hurts. <laughs> my arms still flare. I still have no saliva. But... I don't care about any of that stuff because it's just there. It's just part of me. It's like the fact that my ears stick out or I wear a size 10 shoe. I didn't choose that for myself. The only thing I can choose for myself is what's up here, right? So clearing your mind, it'll fix you mentally, maybe not physically. But you know what? Halfway, halfway to fix still is a good ratio. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about um, music, backing up your brain, and identifying your monkeys. Um, the first thing that I did in this process was stop thinking. I needed to stop thinking. Um, I was analyzing conversations and what did he say and what did he mean by what he said and what should I say back and what will he say after I say, oh my goodness, the hours and hours of my life that I wasted doing that. If that's something that you're doing, hear me now. You will not miss it. When you conquer that monkey, Look it out of your mind. You will not miss that monkey. I promise you. Okay, so I discovered Pandora. Gosh, this must be seven, seven or eight years ago now. Maybe eight years ago. Um, on my little flip back black barrier, whatever I don't remember. Um, I had a Pandora music service, and I picked certain artists. Uh, Jason Ross is my absolute favorite artist now. Um, at the time, it was Maroon 5. Um, thank you, Mr. Levine. Levine, Levine. Uh, Mr. Maroon 5 guy. Because <laughs> that album got me through so much. Um, when you can't trust your thoughts, it's good to put them in someone else's hands, right? Like, let, let Jesus take the wheel. How's that song go, right? So you get the Pandora Music Service. I use um, Amazon now, it comes free with my Prime membership. You pick an artist. Um, I had Frank Sinatra for Cleaning the House, uh, Counting Crows, um, August and everything after. There are so many narcoleptically relatable lyrics in that album. I know the whole thing by heart. And one really cool thing about music is listen to the same album every time you clean your house. <laughs> it's conditioning. After a fashion, every time you hear the album, your body will automatically, remember that automatic behavior, will automatically start walking around and picking things up and wiping things off. It's the craziest thing 
<laughs> you wouldn't believe that it, it could be true. But I noticed it, and I love it. And I do it on purpose now. and just play the album, and it just makes cleaning easier. Who wants to clean? Definitely not me. Um, so when there was a song playing from one of my stations that I liked, that made me feel good, that had me tapping my feet and moving around, um, I would give it the thumbs up, telling the music service to play more songs like this. And it would give me new artists, and it would give me new songs. And sometimes I'd notice I was feeling like confused, or I was feeling um, scattered, or sad, or some other negative emotion. And I would realize the lyric at the time of what I was listening to, or even just the melody of what I was listening to was affecting my mood. And then I would give it the thumbs down. Um, there's a lot of techno music I can't handle. It makes me feel like seizurific, if you will. So um, anything that's too techno or trancey for me gets the thumbs down. So pay attention to how you feel. The whole goal of using music as therapy is to pay attention to how you feel and to control your feelings through the music. So you're doing the dishes and you start thinking about something that you don't want to be thinking about. You focus in like a laser on that music and you listen to the lyrics and repeat them if you know them or repeat them after if you don't know them. And then you're forcing your brain, just like right now. I mean, I'm talking to you. I can't really be thinking about something else right now because I'm talking to you. So if I'm talking the lyrics of the song I'm listening to, I'm not thinking about anything else. And that's a great way to shut your brain off in little three minute snippets. <laughs> I think probably as we get to the chorus, we get a little bit less, um, into the song and, and we can still stop singing and our brain wanders or we can sing because we know it so well and our brain will still wander. So it does take practice. I'm sorry, my eyes are very dry right now. Um, okay, so, oh yeah, the cleaning, you want to have something that makes you feel really good and one of my favorite stations is um, Fergie. Uh, I actually met her once in Hawaii. It was amazing. Um, her and her husband at the time were sitting by the pool and um, they had run into my husband like three times because I was napping. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I missed it three times. So I went over and I said, um, you know, my, my husband saw you three times, but I have narcolepsy. So I was napping. And she held out her arms and she said, don't worry, I'll catch you. And wow, like this famous pop star is offering to catch me if I fall from my narcolepsy. And I'll be really honest, that was a huge moment of acceptance for me, you know, to be accepted in that way. And um, it was very cool. So go Fergie, I'm, I got your back girl forever for that one. <laughs> um, all right, so, uh, positive emotion. Oh yeah, um, the study that I mentioned. Okay, so it has to do with positive emotions and anger, increasing your wakefulness and food. Um, a little foggy about the food part of it right now, but um, I know it's in there. So uh, I created a page on my blog. It's uh, goingbeyondcoping.com forward slash introspection. And it gives a little um, synopsis of what I'm doing and the videos are embedded there or the link to the channel is there. I think I'm going to put the playlist. Honestly, I haven't finished that part of it, but you can get to the YouTube channel from this page and there is um, a downloadable on there from the last series. The modes tracker is there and um, there'll be a downloadable for this series as well. Um, and the studies, a link to the study that I just referenced about positivity and emotions. And keep in mind, if you don't have narcolepsy, it's still good to read the study because emotions still affect you, even if you don't think that they do. And even if you don't have the same kind of reactions that people with narcolepsy that have cataplexy do, 
um, people with narcolepsy that don't have cataplexy are still affected by emotions. They just don't have that muscle loss, but they still have that tiredness and the achiness and, and the things that come with thinking about things you don't want to be thinking about. They're there. You just have to do something about it. And then you can regain a little bit of that um, energy loss and give it to something else, something uh, more worthwhile to do. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, the sign up thing. <laughs> okay, so when I did the web page, I can see the subscribe button in the little text editor, but when I publish it, the subscribe button doesn't show up. And I don't know why, and I can't fix it, and I don't care. <laughs> so if you just type in your name and your email address and hit enter on your keyboard, it will sign you up, um, and you will get a confirmation email. If you don't get a confirmation email, it didn't work, try again. Um, if you're on your mobile phone, you don't have enter, but um, when I was on mine, it said go. So hit go, and that should subscribe you. Um, I'm going to send the whole text. It's going to be different because I'm going way off script with this one. But the, the, the content will be the same. Just the way it's delivered will be different. So if you would rather read, you can um, go to the blog and read it. Um, if you want to save it for later or whatever, um, look up all the uh, little downloadables and stuff that I'm including. Okay, so let's see. The music, right? Music got me to stop thinking about things um, in moments. It wasn't constant. Um, I literally had to work at it really, really hard. Uh, I did a lot of things that were monotonous in uh, tasks, um, you know, between chores and cleaning. And I had a business at that time and everything was kind of monotonous. Um, my mind would wander. And I forced myself to sing those songs and listen to that music, but um, it, I wasn't strong enough to avoid it all the time, and um, it, it really caused problems for me. Uh, I decided to reboot my life, and I literally blew everything up. And uh, a few months later, I tried to go back on narcolepsy meds, and that was a nightmare. Um, sick as a dog living on welfare, my business going down the drain quickly, um, living in a bad neighborhood with my three kids half the time, my two dogs all the time, and uh, an alcoholic hoarder for a roommate. <laughs> wow, seriously. Like, just going back through my notes and writing all that stuff down, I was like, girl, <laughs> you did it. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I had a lot of monkeys. I had all kinds of bad monkeys. I had the analyzing monkeys. I had the obsessing monkeys. I had the wonder and the ponder and the conversation monkeys. I had the drama monkeys. I used to get pulled into so much drama, it's not even funny. I can't even tell you how many times people would ask me something in confidence and then just betray my confidence to the person they were asking me about. And I never understood why it continued to happen over and over. And the reason is because you're not supposed to do things like that. You, you just, it's like something that you have to avoid. Like if people want you to confide with them about someone else and it's not a positive thing, unless you're ready to go talk to that person yourself, just don't, don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Don't do it. Um, yeah, current health status is another thing that uh, people with chronic illness think about a lot. Um, I had a lot of monkeys, and they were all behaving badly. <laughs> Everything would seem okay, and then a random monkey would come jumping around, insisting I pay attention to it. Um, most of the time it seemed like the monkeys were running the show. And, and it was very draining, really was. Lots of sadness, lots of tears. Um, I had a friend over, someone that I had uh, met in my reaching out phase where I was trying to reach new and interesting people who would give me new information from my brain because, you know, that really it makes a difference. 
and I was listening to this song and it's, I just want to be okay today. And I, I was like, oh, I love that song. And she's like, why? Why just be okay? And I'm like, well, because okay is like uh, four yards up from where I am now. Because like I'm looking up at okay, like please, can I just get there? But I thought about it, you know, it was like an earworm in my brain. Can I be more than okay? Can I do that? Like with my financial problems and my combative ex and my crappy roommate and uh, my money trouble and my health status. Can I be more than okay? Like, is that even allowed? Spoiler alert, yes! <laughs> it is. It is allowed and uh, highly encouraged. Um, I've built this little team of narcoleptics who are determined to help people understand the difference that positivity makes. And i um, really excited to bring this to you um, with their help. Uh, Lynn and Brian have just been like tremendously helpful in uh, all of this. So thanks guys. All right. So now, let's see, where are we? We want to be good, right? We want to get rid of these residents in our head. We want to be happy. We want to not um, be sad, etc. Distracted, miserable, depressed. Clinical depression, I just want to caveat this by saying um, if you have a chemical imbalance in your brain, don't feel bad if you can't get to where you need to be. Um, you know, some of us are missing one thing, some of us are missing another thing, and you never want to beat yourself up for showing up to the party without chips. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't have the chips, and you should never beat yourself up for that. Um, if you suffer from clinical depression, I'm sure that you're seeing a medical professional, which is the very best thing that you can do. And you can listen to these things and, and maybe find some moments where you can let yourself escape from whatever it is that's weighing you down with music or um, focus or something else. I just, I know it's harder when it's uh, imbalanced and I just wanted to, you know, state that. Um, heck, it's harder for me because, I mean, Buddha said all you gotta do is breathe. <laughs> no. So yeah, do what you can. Try everything you can try. Whatever's free, easy, and doesn't seem too ridiculous. Give it a go. Okay, so at this point now, we are upping our mood by listening to lyrics and singing along. That's our goal. Shut the monkeys up for a little while. Okay. Um, like I said, I tried this over and over and over, over years of time before I was successful at it. And um, the music made it like possible. Like if I hadn't gotten to the point where I could at least stop listening to my monkeys for three minutes at a time, I don't know that I would have been able to do this. I think that I, I don't think I ever would have gotten control over my head. Um, the next important thing after you get your mood up is uh, to back up your hard drive. <laughs> Anytime you're going to go messing around with your computer, you want to back up your hard drive. So our goal is to stop thinking about things, but we don't want to forget things, right? Brain fog is a real thing and it's already easier for us to forget stuff. So you want to plan your life as if you have amnesia. <laughs> or you're, I should say, as if you're going to have amnesia. And I don't know if you ever saw that movie 50 First Dates with uh, Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler, but it's one of my favorite movies ever. <laughs> Silly as it is. Um, I guess because 
you know, I rewrite every day. I don't think about yesterday because it's too draining to do so. Um, but in the movie, she woke up every day not remembering what had happened over the last time period since this car accident that she had. So people planned her life out for her and arranged things for her. And, and that's kind of what you have to do for yourself. Um, you want to stop your thinking. You want to turn off your thoughts. You got to make sure that you're not going to forget things that are really important. So you want to keep a calendar. And I don't mean write your name in it, stick it on your desk and let it collect dust. I mean keep a calendar. Um, I've done them on paper, I've done them electronically. Um, I'm now at the point where I don't need to keep a calendar anymore um, in terms of daily usage because uh, I have my routine down and I do the same things the same days every time and it really really makes a difference <laughs> you know what's coming next you know you know what your days is, is going to be and I have simplified my life intentionally um, for that reason to make things easier for me um, I work 24 hours a week and I nap in the daytime at least 14 hours a week so I don't have a lot left and I gotta do what I can do in that time period um, this video alone just writing the script and getting ready for this is it's been a month of you know little bits of time here and there um, but yeah write it all down in the beginning until now if you if you remember things if you already have a great routine you don't need to do this because you know don't do work you don't have to do but if you've ever forgotten to pick your kids up from school <laughs> or to eat or to get your clothes out of the dryer then this is a very very important step for you um, forgetting things weighs on you like a lot and you can spend time worrying about forgetting things. So the more you use your um, calendar and, and to go even further, your alarms on your cell phone, um, the better off you're gonna be. You can have 100 alarms now <laughs> on a smartphone. Um, I have like 10 from before I ever leave the house to even take the kids to school. And depending on what's happening the next day, I turn on the different ones. So I have my wake up time, I have my meditate time, and whether or not I'm, I'm having a shower or washing my hair, or if someone has to get up early, if what's their early time. If I don't have to take the kids to school that day, I have a later shower time. And it's all in there already. So before I go to bed at night, I on, 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 put on my music and my headphones and go to sleep. And then in the morning, I don't, I don't think about, oh, is it time to meditate yet? Oh, is it time to go do this? Because the phone just tells me, ding, ding, it's time, go do it. And I go do it. And you would really love how much headspace you get when you live your life like that. Because you're not worrying like about anything. It's so good not to worry. Okay, uh, the worrying about remembering monkey is a really big monkey. And it smells bad, so you really want to get rid of that one. You want to use every crutch that you can um, at your disposal. Um, you know, we've all been given this house to live in. Uh, for our time here on this earth and figuring out what light switches work, what lights is your responsibility and knowing how to take care of your house is your responsibility and um, it'll get a lot more headspace to manage that by clearing your mind. So, um, just try stuff, you know, like I'm terrible with recipes. <laughs> I really am. Like, I'll have them on the paper and I'll be like, one teaspoon of oregano. And then I go get the oregano and then I look at the teaspoon and I'm like, was that a half a teaspoon? Was it the whole teaspoon? I, I, I look at it like six, eight times 
it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but the, I get nervous following a recipe. I don't know why. It just makes it so much more complicated for me. So I taught myself how to freestyle cook. I don't measure anything. I just, oh, that, that looks good. That that comes out good like that. That's about about the way I want it. And and that monkey's gone. That recipe monkey. Um, sometimes I still make things with the recipe, but uh, usually I make it first time with the recipe and then I wing it after that because um, I, I just it's a limitation of mine. And like I said, just like those big feet, I accept it. Um, another fellow uh, narcoleptic gave a great advice when she said she used to get stressed out about uh, getting dressed every day. And um, so she laid out her clothes for the week on Sunday. And then she just wakes up, she puts on her clothes, and she's done. Boom. If you get stressed about clothes, try it. If it works, incorporate it. If it doesn't work, so what? You didn't really hurt yourself or anything. <laughs> Not that big of a putting yourself out there. Okay, so you're tracking everything. You're tracking your um, bills. You're tracking your, um, let's see, what did I put in here? Yeah, that's what I did say with the, the bills and stuff. All right, um, so once you've got everything in the calendar, what's left, right? So we're thinking about our health, our relationships, our debts, our bills, our business, job, food, kids, school stuff, their school stuff, homework, um, projects, home stuff, car stuff. There's so much to be thought about, right? Um, put it all in the calendar. I have a 10 minutes till we have to leave alarm that I snooze for nine and start yelling when it goes off the second time. I gotta go! Um, but it keeps me on track and it keeps them on track. Um, one of my kids gets out earlier than the other ones on Sundays into the calendar so I don't forget. Um, my oldest son does night school on Monday, so I'm only picking up his brother into the calendar so I don't forget. And yes, I have driven to my son's school and sat there for 25 minutes before I remembered he was staying after for night school. So when you forget something, do an alarm for as long as you need to until you stop forgetting about those things. Um, you can schedule everything, your bills, um, have them tickle a week before they're due, um, have a bill day, if you can arrange your payments to be on a certain day, keep them all in the box until it's time to pay them. Um, oil changes, doctor appointments, therapy, renewing prescriptions, um, exercise, eating, showering, laundry, um, grocery shopping, favors you're doing for somebody else, appointments, lunches, whatever. Just put it all in there. Or write it on a calendar if you don't have um, the ability to use a electronic calendar. Okay, so the goal in that is to keep everything where it's supposed to be instead of running around in here. So then you stop worrying. Okay, here's the Buddhist diagram of worry. I love this. Do you have a problem? No? Then don't worry. <laughs> yes? Can you do something about it? No? Then don't worry. Yes? Then don't worry. So when problems come up, deal with them, find a solution, put it in the calendar, and then back out it goes. The goal is to stop entertaining monkeys. <laughs> That's the goal. Um, 
Grocery shopping and meal planning will really help you with food monkeys. Um, I have, this is my actual grocery list for next week off my fridge. Um, I don't have anything marked on it yet because it's only Monday. <laughs> but I put on there, um, I have three different stores that I go to plus these other little things that I have to do sometimes down there. And so when, like obviously I'm not buying toilet paper every week, but when I get down to the last pack of toilet paper coming out of the garage, I will circle the toilet paper on there. If it's not circled, I just cross it off before I do my grocery shopping. Um, I write down the menu for the week down here. What am I eating? And then um, when I go to the store, if they're out of whatever it is that I wanted to cook, I can automatically pick something else for that day and buy it right then. And then when I'm done, I come home, I fold this in half, and the menu is here, stuck on the fridge for the kids and you for, um, you know, so you're not standing there with the fridge open wondering, hmm, what goes good with yellow mustard? Because <laughs> that's all you got left in there, right? Schedule, 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 schedule. It really, really does help with the headspace thing. Okay, so now at this point, we're already at like several hours, if not weeks worth of work, right? You want to get comfortable with, um, okay, if you don't like music, um, you'll have to figure something else out, whether it's reading or um, playing an instrument or, um, something else that you can do that is positive and gets you distracted enough that you stop thinking about things. Now, it's, it's not, you don't want to do something that's going to get you so busy that you're thinking while you're doing it. The goal is to not think at all for those brief periods of time which is what people do when they meditate, right? They're told to clear their thoughts and just watch their thoughts, but, but we don't, we don't want to do that because we'll probably fall asleep. So we want to instead listen to the song lyrics and let that fill our heads rather than our thoughts. Um, but the trick to, to all of this is what I like to call the you filter, right? I mean, I've listened to and subscribed to help self-help stuff for a decade now and I don't do anything exactly the way that it was taught to me. Um, I had to put it through the U filter and apply it to me and eventually I found that combination and it worked. So that's what you have to do. This video isn't going to be the end. You're not going to get to the end of the video series and go, oh, I've done it. Eureka. No. There's work here to be done, and it's all your work to do. And, um, you know, if you need help, you can seek people out for that help. You can tell them what you're trying to do and um, see if they have suggestions for you. You can also uh, look at other videos about clearing your mind and um, quieting the mind. Um, but to be honest, most of them are just going to tell you to stop thinking. <laughs> and, uh, that's really what it is, but I had to do a bunch of stuff before I could get to the point where I felt safe stopping thinking, if that makes sense. Okay, so what's left? This is um, the list of things I think about. One of the downloadables on the blog is a little um, list of things I think about chart printed one out. Let's see if I can get. Okay, so you can download that as a PDF to fill it in or whatever you want to do. Um, I don't think it's fillable actually, so you could print it out and write it. <laughs> or you can just print it from the web page. You don't even need to download it if you don't want to keep it. But um, there's four columns here. The first one is stuff I think about. And then this one says box monkey. 
This one says calendar monkey. And this one says stuff I want to think about. Okay, so what you're going to do is write down all the stuff you think about. Uh, bills, um, relationships at work, um, food, whatever. Whatever it is, like spend some quality time noticing your thoughts. They talk about that in meditation. Notice your thoughts. Okay, so what are you thinking about? And then assign it, okay? So you're going to say, um, conversations you should have had or you've already had. That's not a box monkey. It's not a bill you're going to have to pay. It's not something you can stick in a box and, and go deal with later. It's not a calendar monkey. It's not something you can schedule. You don't want to schedule time to rehash old conversations. And it's not something that you want to think about. So this is unassigned. It doesn't get a box. And go through all those things. And at the end, after you've assigned everything, you'll see things that are unassigned, like uh, worry, um, feeling inadequate. Um, if you're feeling inadequate, you have to ask yourself, can I do something about that? Like, what would make me feel adequate? And if you can do something about it, then it becomes a calendar monkey. And say it's you feel inadequate because you don't know how to use Excel at work as good as you could. Just using that as an example. So you can schedule in your calendar to watch some how-to videos on how to use Excel or to find some sort of online free Excel training or to find someone who's willing to teach you. But that's something that you can do something about. So it goes in your calendar and then you stop thinking about it. Um, if you can't change anything, then it doesn't go on the calendar and it doesn't go in the box. You just need to kill that thought because you aren't inadequate. Like I was talking about before, some of us just didn't come with all of our parts. <laughs> and that's okay, right? I mean, some people are born missing limbs or um, organs or whatever. I mean, you're here how you got here. Why is irrelevant? What? What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with your life? And... It's not sit around asking, why did I get stuck with eight disabling disorders? Because, oh God, we'd be here a long time <laughs> if that's all we thought about. No, I just need to keep going, keep pushing. Um, and I don't mean in an overdo it way. Believe me, I am the first person to say no and self-care is my number one thing. But I never gave up trying to get right in my head. I never stopped trying to find that key to, to getting peace in my own head. And I did it. And you can too. You really can. I mean, it seemed like it right now. Um, or maybe it does. But you can do it. I have faith in you. Okay, so um, there's a bunch of other monkeys that really don't belong in your head. And um, they're difficult ones, you know, memories of the past and uh, pain and the shoulda, coulda, woulda monkeys. Oh gosh, shoulda, coulda, woulda monkeys are the worst. Um, you need to ask yourself, what's going to happen if I don't think about them? And then you need to be really honest with yourself, <laughs> right? Like. You think about different things than everybody else does. They're not thinking about the same things that you are. So, you know your worst case scenario. And 
a lot of times our worst case scenario is that we're just going to forget something. And forgetting isn't always a bad thing, right? Especially if it had to do with the past. Um, I had a really tumultuous life. Like, I could tell you stories and probably make you cry. <laughs> Not that I want to, believe me, I don't. But um, that's over. And this is now. And I'm old now. I don't look it, but I am. And I don't want to be that anymore, you know? I want to be happy. I want to manage my life. I want to feel good about my life and my dog and my kids and the beach and everything. So I just choose to. Every day you make a choice. Okay, uh, let's see. So now what you have to do is um, identify your monkeys. This is where your part of the work comes in. Uh, print out the chart or make your own little chart and list out the things that are taking up headspace now and uh, determine which ones get to stay and which ones don't get to stay. Um, you're going to head into um, music, hopefully, and setting up your calendar and um, carry the chart around with you for a while, you know? And when you're driving in the car and you realize you're thinking about, oh God, I did that thing that one time and I never forgot about it, write it on the list. Because as you go through, you'll see just exactly how many of these negative things you're carrying around with you that they really just don't deserve a home in your house. So they need to be evicted. Um, while you're doing that, I'm going to start uh, writing the second video, which will be noticing your monkeys. Um, this is how I worked on cleaning up the ones that didn't get to stay. And uh, it's important to do that because noticing where they came from, not why they're there, we don't care why. But what do I do that brings that monkey in my head? And what can I do to kill it dead? <gasps> it rhymes. Ridiculous. I'm getting tired. It's been a while. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, all right, after that, the third video will be affecting change, um, where I talk about tips and tricks for mass monkey side. <laughs> uh, there was a lady I knew once, she was a crossing guard, and a very vibrant, alive woman. And people would take advantage of her. And she would tell me the stories. And I would tell her, you know, you need to not do that, you need to not do that. I said, you should bring your stop sign home and just hold up your stop sign <laughs> so that they get the point. And she would always let herself get to the point where she was completely run down, if not ill, where she would finally stomp her feet and say, enough, enough. And that's where you need to get with your thoughts. Um, for me, I would imagine her, because she was so entertaining, standing in my head, and I would think about the things that I didn't want to be thinking about, and she'd hold up her stop sign. And if I continued to think about them, she'd chase me around with it. And it would make me laugh, and it would make me think about her, and it would make me think about how I felt bad for her that she couldn't overcome her boundary issues with people who were taking advantage of her. And it helped me increase my boundaries so that I didn't have people taking advantage of me. So it was a total win-win in, in that regard. Um, but try, try anything you can think of that, that will help you, you know. Um, there was a movie, uh, and the guy who did the Deuce Bigelow, what's his name, Rob Schneider, um, I think it was Waterboy with Adam Sandler, uh, he has this one line where he's like, you can do it! <laughs> and every time I get really sleepy, I kind of lean into that, and I, I laugh, and I hear it in my head, and um, my husband actually met Rob Schneider, and um, I just want everybody to know uh, especially the narcoleptics watching this, that he is aware that the movie does not 
appropriately depict narcolepsy. And um, yeah, I'm sure he's been yelled at quite a few times for that one, but he was cool about it when my husband gave him the what for and the how come and the why not. So yeah, you can do it. It's just always funny. Okay, um, another thing that you can do uh, to get rid of, to get some quiet time, right? So you're listening to the music and, and maybe it's not working. Maybe you're really having a bad time. You've already written the thought on your list and you just need an escape from the thought process that you're having is to hyper focus. Okay, so while you're washing the dishes, your mind wanders. But if you focus your mind, like I'm scrubbing this side and now I'm scrubbing that side and now I'm rinsing. And if you like narrate your life like that, um, repeating the words either out loud or in your head, um, it's impossible to have another thought while you're talking in that way. So just one more little tip. Okay, so um, you can find me and my writing on my blog at goingbeyondcoping.com. I thought I saved that one little ticket out here, but I guess not. Um, you can find me on Facebook on the Positively Narcolepsy community page. And then there's also a Positively Narcolepsy group if you want to be part of the group. Um, a lot of the support groups for people with narcolepsy have a lot of um, negative things. Narcolepsy is a negative uh, symptom. I mean, our symptoms suck and they're awful. Um, but I wanted to create a space that was free of empathy and anxiety for the people who are trying to stay positive. And so I still go in the other groups and I still have those times where I need to vent something out or ask a question or what have you. But this particular group is a positive environment. We share funny memes and play silly games and make jokes about falling asleep. Um, so if you need that as motivation, um, feel free to join us there. Uh, YouTube channel is going beyond coping without the spaces. Uh, my mode series is on there for identifying the modes that people with chronic illness live in and coping through um, emotional things that come at us that thrust us from mood to mood and learning how to um, change that a little bit to lessen up the symptoms and give you more headspace. Um, okay, so yeah, notice is next. I'll get that done as soon as I can. And I'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and sign up for the blog notifications on the website at goingbeyondcoping.com forward slash introspection. And Brian is going to embed these cool little things so that you can click Oh, we can't do that yet, though, because they're not made yet. <laughs> I'm so tired now. You have no idea. I have to go sleep. And yes, I'm going to make good notes about what you're editing out of this. <laughs>